working in Elizabethan London. The first was the composer of that Ave Verum, William Byrd, who, despite being a Catholic in a Protestant country, was the leading composer of his time, and perhaps the greatest composer England has ever produced. The other was William Shakespeare, in whose honour we meet tonight to commemorate the 400th anniversary of his death. In 1605, Shakespeare was 40 years old and at the height of his fame as an actor and playwright. However, in his 30s, Shakespeare's personal life had gone through a violent upheaval and the poems he produced at that time were of particular interest to LGBT plus audiences. 20 years earlier, Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway. She was 27 at the time and three months pregnant. Shakespeare was 18. Their daughter, Susanna, was born in 1583, and two years later, Anne gave birth to twins, Hamlet and Judith. We know almost nothing of Shakespeare's life when he was in his 20s, but at some point, he left Stratford and arrived in London, where his career as an actor and playwright soon made him rich and famous. He had an affair with a married woman and wrote sonnets to her. He tells us that she had dark hair and eyes, and she is therefore known as the Dark Lady of the Sonnets. Then, in his mid-thirties, he met the handsome young man that he called his Tender Churl, and fell passionately in love with him. We know nothing about the Tender Churl, but to Shakespeare, he embodied everything in the world that was good and beautiful and true. And the 126 sonnets that Shakespeare wrote to his tender churl are amongst the most beautiful and intense love poems in the English language. Why, 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 with the tide, do I not glance aside? To newfound methods and to compound strange. these rebel powers at thee array. Why dost thou pine within and suffer dearth, painting thy, thy outward walls so costly gay? Why so large cost, having so short a lease, dost thou upon thy fading mansion spend? Shall worms, inheritors of this excess, eat up thy charge? Is this thy body's end? Then, soul, lift thou upon thy servant's loss, and let that pine to aggravate thy store, by turns divine in selling hours of dross, within be fed, without be rich no more. 
so shall thou feed on death, which feeds on men, and death once dead, there's no more dying then.